This is Lucky Inc. Media. Live from Lucky Inc. Media Studios in Munich, these are the Nutlows Talks. In-depth conversations with designers, artists, connoisseurs, and today's tastemakers. And now, please welcome your hosts, Seams Lookwalt. Enjoy the show. Nahtlos die Lifestyle Talkshow Folge 77. Langsam nähern wir uns der 80. Das hätte ich mir vor noch bestimmt einem oder anderthalb Jahren nie denken, nie träumen lassen, dass es, es einmal in Anführungszeichen so weit kommt, dass wir so lange äh, durchhalten und hoffentlich, sagt uns, wenn es anders ist, aber euch äh, Woche für Woche oder zumindest im zweiwöchentlichen Rhythmus immer neue Folgen aus der äh, Lifestyle-Welt mit spannenden Persönlichkeiten, die dort Business machen, Trends setzen, äh, kreativ tätig sind, das wird euch, euch das so lange und so abwechslungsreich bieten können, ähm, das freut uns riesig, freut mich riesig. Heute dreht sich alles um ähm, Hotellerie und zwar Top-Hotellerie. Das Berliner Hotel de Rom, das Charles in München oder das ehrwürdige Balmoral in Edinburgh. Dort haben wir vor kurzem ja eine sehr feine Tea Time genießen können. Sir Rocco Forte hat Stück für Stück ein Herbergen-Imperium aufgebaut. Er nennt es die Rocco Forte. Collection und zumindest das Hotel de Rome in Berlin ist ein fester Location-Bestandteil der Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week geworden. Insofern ist das Wort Collection da besonders äh, zutreffend. Ihn habe ich getroffen äh, vor einigen Jahren für äh, ein Interview für How to Spend It und äh, am Anfang dachte ich, na, ist das vielleicht ein einer der eher steiferen Engländer, aber er ist dann wunderbar aufgetaut, hat sozusagen sein italienisches äh, Familienerbe aktiviert und das war dann wirklich eine sehr äh, kurzweilige Unterhaltung, die ich mich freue, euch heute hier einspielen zu können. Denn äh, fit hält sich Sir Rocco zum Beispiel auf richtigen Hightech-Zweirädern, das hat er mir äh, verraten und vieles, vieles weitere mehr. Ich würde also sagen... Nach ein ganz paar äh, Housekeeping-Bemerkungen von mir äh, heißt es hereinspaziert in die Welt der Top-Hotellerie und zum Interview mit Sir Rocco Forte. Wie immer findet ihr die Links zu dieser Folge und äh, ein, zwei Bilder und natürlich auch den eingebetteten Player, mit dem ihr das Ganze ohne iPhone, iPod äh, oder andere Devices äh, gleich im Web hören könnt. Auch unterwegs übrigens, das findet ihr alles unter nahtlosblog.de slash podcast und da ist es dann die Folge 77. Und wir hoffen, dass ihr uns weiterhin auch durch die USA folgt. Das Ganze auf nahtlosblog.de slash us-tour-2014 und dort findet ihr, wie auch in der Sidebar zum Blog, natürlich die den Flickr-Link und da posten wir jede Menge Fotos mal ganz ohne Instagram-Filter, einfach so, wie äh, die Landschaften, Gebäude, Menschen auch vor unseren Augen aussahen. Das soll es eigentlich schon gewesen sein und ähm, ihr könnt jetzt eigentlich direkt, ohne einzuchecken, äh, Sir Rocco Forte kennenlernen und äh, dabei wünsche ich euch ganz, ganz viel Spaß und wir danken euch an dieser Stelle natürlich auch nochmal ganz herzlich für die Treue und für die über 24.000 Downloads, die unsere Podcasts bisher generiert haben. So soll es weitergehen, deshalb gerne weitersagen, gerne bewerten im iTunes Store. Das ist ganz, ganz einfach. Einfach bei iTunes nahtlos eingeben, dann kommt sofort unser Podcast ganz oben und ähm, dem könnt ihr dann einige... Sterne, am liebsten natürlich fünf verleihen und ihr könnt noch eine Bewertung ausfüllen, ihr könnt was dazu schreiben, müsst es aber nicht, die Sterne helfen uns auch schon äh, eine ganze Menge weiter, denn iTunes äh, belohnt natürlich die Podcasts, die positive Bewertungen sammeln und äh, schiebt uns ein klein wenig weiter nach oben in seinem Algorithmus und dann können noch mehr Leute unsere äh, Lifestyle-Talks 
hören und das ist doch vielleicht auch in unser aller Sinne und ganz toll und dafür jetzt schon mal ganz recht herzlichen Dank. Jetzt aber weiter mit meinem Interview Sir Rocco Forte. Yes. You're still doing triathlons? Yes. Well, when's, when's the next one you're preparing? Well, I don't, I'm sort of hoping... I'd like to do uh, the World Championships, in Sid, uh, which are in Australia, on the Gold Coast in September. In September? Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Then that's, but I have that's to... The month I don't know whether... Week. This is a quite a difficult year business-wise, whether I have right. time to train. Because the last World Championships I did was in Hamburg. Oh, really? Uh, a year ago, last yeah, September. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, which was a great, um, a very good event, very well organized event, one of the best. I, oh, really? Yeah. Huh? And I came 13th there, so I was. Of, of how many people? 100, really 100, 100 in my, 100 in uh -huh. my age group. That's good. So it was okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, I'd like to do better, but it's difficult. Because the right. people in my age group are sort of mostly retired and mostly prof they become professional athletes. I, d I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> right, because you still have a, yeah. an enormous business to run. So, um, and But also, you do that. also you now, do well, I hmm? you should do September. That's that's. Well, know. I'm going to try, and because the, then I have to, you know, I have to qualify, so I have to do qualifying races okay. beforehand, okay. Uh, and so on. So, um, this is a question of getting myself fit enough and you know you have to focus to get mm -hmm. to get fit mm -hmm. because you, know, you have to train in the uh, in the early morning uh, and in the evenings and so so you know right. it's a sort of a discipline to it and if you've got a lot in your mind it's quite difficult to mm -hmm. to do and also now because I'm opening the Verdura golf mm -hmm. resort I have mm -hmm. to get my golf up scratch again because I since I took up triathlon I stopped oh, really? I'm always stopped playing golf Okay. I play three times a year, and I used to be quite a good golf player. What's your current handicap? Sing, I don't know. I don't have one okay. at the moment. I think, but I used to be sort of single figure, right? Handicap. So, uh -huh. um, so I have to get uh, I have to get back into into that. So when I hit, you know, the f we open the course. I hit the first ball. It goes to 300 yards straight down the middle. Right. Not, not one way or the other. <laughs> I think you can still manage that. One. Yeah. Um, wh and where, where where you based? I mean, where where's like the, the home core is London. Of your life? Is, is London? Yes. Right in the city or in the or, in the city? Right? Yes, okay. I live in Chelsea. Okay. But I have a farm outside of London. I read about near, that. Yeah. Near Guildford, which uh -huh. is is about 25 minutes at the right time of day, and right. in the middle of the countryside, I have a. A uh, thousand hectares mm -hmm. of, of land. Uh, so that I go there. I try and go there at weekends when I'm in when I'm in uh, when I'm in mm -hmm. London or England. I'm not traveling. For, Would you describe for yourself as as a as a country guy, really, at heart, or or um, or is that just? Like, no, I think like I, I think I'd find it difficult to live in the escape. country, like full time. Full time. I sort of quite like the buzz of a city and mm -hmm. the motivation the city gives you. Because almost and all your you, properties are in. Yeah, but I mean, work. You know, also, you know, if you work, you can't really live in the south. If you yeah. work, ever running a business is quite difficult. To, I mean, quite nice to organize yourself so you can do it. From the, exactly, you know, from the barn. But, uh, <laughs> but it doesn't really quite. It doesn't work that way. Did you, did you try that once? And I'm not clever enough to do that. There was a friend of mine called Joe Nickerson. It was a friend of my father's and mine, but he's sort of dead now. But he. He built it. He used to love shooting, hunting, mm -hmm. and uh, bird shooting. Right. And he uh, he used to shoot. Uh, the, the shooting season is from in England from the 15th of August with grouse to to the end of January. Right. And and he used to shoot almost every day in the shooting season, wow. and still built up a very successful business. And he was based in the countryside. He had a f big farming estate, right. and then he, he developed seed varieties. And then uh, uh, special hybrids of pigs and duck and so on. How, did you, how did you do it? I know he was did very clever, very well organized man. Okay. Really. okay. And But he used to work. He used to work uh, a few hours. You know, he used to get up early in the morning, work for two or three hours before going out to shoot, and then come right. back. 
and working for three hours in the afternoon, two or three hours in the afternoon. So sort of, somehow he managed to to do it. Uh -huh. you, you're a hunter yourself, right? How how did that come about? From from early child days yeah, on, were you trained to to to? Well, from, yeah, my father did it, so I sort of okay. did it with him. You, as, you know, up. he played golf. I played golf with him. So, okay. so hunting, and fishing as well. I used to fish a lot. No, I don't. You know, salmon fishing and trout fishing. Right. Uh, with a fly, fly. Uh -huh. I, fly fishing. I used to like that a lot, but I don't have time. Uh -huh. Now, you, you, as as you said, you you've lots of sports that you play and and you mm. have to train for. Um, could you recommend a couple of uh, uh, equipment shops or or people you you go to uh, to buy your golf stuff, your all you need, running shoes? You you have some some brands you'd like to recommend. Uh, um, well, I mean, running shoes. I, I have. Um, I use Nike shoes. And there was a there, you know, there's a very good Nike shop in London, uh -huh. uh, in Oxford Circus. Right. Because uh, one has to be very particular about. Yeah, but I mean, I have I have competing. I have special implants made because mm -hmm. my. Uh, I sort of feel, I pronate inwards, right, and therefore uh, it's quite easy to injure yourself mm -hmm. unless you have uh, you have have inner cells you put in the foot which are made right. to measure to deal with my my problem. And mm -hmm. I think people certainly over a certain age. And now I think all footballers. I don't think it matters about age. No. All footballers now have them in their mm -hmm. in their shoes. And I think if you're going to run a lot, mm -hmm. you should get your feet checked out right. for that. Right. Because uh, like exactly otherwise, that's so you stop. Get, otherwise, level, you, yeah. I used to get very bad Achilles hen, tendon injuries. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, I don't anymore. Uh -huh. and, and golf. Uh, and golf. I don't know. I mean, I usually. I mean, people. Uh, I usually buy my golf clubs. You know, you don't buy golf clubs that often. But from my, from the pro shop at the golf clubs that I'm, you know, the golf course where I play. I play. I'm a member of Sunningdale. Okay. Um, which is where? Which is um, near Ascot. It's okay, um, and it's one of the sort of great courses of of England, the historic courses of two courses, of an old course and new course. New course is a hundred years old. So, okay. So which one do you play? Which one you do you play prefer? both? Because sometimes okay. they. That's where I understood about uh, separating four balls. People who play four, mm -hmm. people who play two. What you talked about before, yes. yeah, with the Vidura uh, courses. Um, because you, if you're two, you go faster than people go four. So right. if you're behind someone you're going four, they're holding you up. Mm -hmm. um, so they're uh, so they have a shop a, there. Yeah, they have a, a shop, shop there. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a pro there called Keith Maxwell, who's right. uh, who's um, you know he always sort of has special clubs and things he gets in. And <laughs> the thing you because you tend to buy a set of irons, they keep mm -hmm. them for three years or. Right. Two or three years, and then you. But you have the driver. You're always getting a new driver or okay. a new putter, mm -hmm. uh, and he has a a good variety there. But but because um, I know actually there's no real sort of golf shop in in London. That okay, you should open one. No, maybe. Maybe that would be a niche I I to branch I, into. I think I'll stick to hotels. <laughs> <laughs> Get your place, plates full with that. Um, It'd be a very good golf shop at Verdura, where we. Oh, okay. Yes, so so that, that's we'll have a lot of yeah. There we, you go, we, full we have a. We're going to work with uh, Callaway, mm -hmm. um, Heard of them. and have a, a club fitting, so you can try the new clubs. You right. can get them measure, made to measure, uh, oh, fit, you know, special shafts and so on, mm -hmm. according to your your ability and right. and what you and what you need. So. We're going to do that. We're going to do that there, and we'll have, we'll have all the um, uh, the newest Callaway clubs for hire. Mm -hmm. So uh, people who haven't can come and rent rent clubs. They mm -hmm. rent high quality clubs right. if they haven't don't want to take their own bag. Now, as as you are, uh, as you've already said, you're you're a very busy man and, and, and going from one country to another all week long. Um, is is there anything? Any gadget or object that that really that you always take with you that that kind of like is like a constant in 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 your life. Is there something you you can't travel without, basically? I mean, apart from your BlackBerry or cell yes. phone, of course. Well, I'm not I'm not sort of a great 
gadget man in no, that way. It doesn't have to be a gadget, but right. it's something that well, you need to a, feel comfortable on a plane. I have a big briefcase. Or, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, still, I'm still someone who, who likes reading paper. I don't like, I don't like looking at a screen. Mm-hmm. So I have a very big briefcase, which I bought. I don't know, it's probably about 15 years old. I'm very battered. <laughs> Uh, which I, I got at Asprey's, which, which bre- the, the wait, old Asprey's. Oh, at, at Asprey's. Uh, and uh, so I can get a lot of paper into it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're almost through already. Um, now, does this, this fashion interest you at all? Because, uh, of course, you're very well dressed. Uh, um, is, is that really something that interests you in, 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 in any aspect? Well, I mean, I think, obviously... Yeah, I mean, sort of, if you're interested in your appearance, you're interested in fashion. But mm-hmm. I don't. I, in in uh, in in terms of men's fashion, mm-hmm. I, you know, I go to Savile Row. I have suits made that made to measure there. Mm-hmm. Where exactly? Uh, the um, well, my my um, my old tailor retired. I had went to oh. the same tailor for about forty years. Right. And he retired uh, and and sold his business into a new one. I'm just and I'm trying, trying to think. I can't think of his name now. Uh, the old tailor was called James and James. And the new one is called. I have to tell you, I can't think of it now. Um, no problem. You can and then I go. You know, I like having my shoes made mm-hmm. to measure. Uh, and I go to there's a man called Cleverly. A uh-huh. place called Cleverly, which is in the arcade opposite Brown's Hotel. Yeah. Uh, the arcade Aspen. that runs from Albemarle Street to to Bond Street. Okay. Uh, I think it's called the Bond Street Arcade, actually. And originally there was an Anthony Cleverly who uh, was a little hunchback who made oh, really? shoes for a few people. When was that? Like ages and, ago? Or? And, uh, well, he died about, I think he died about 15 years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, and he didn't have a shop. He came to you, and he ha- and he made shoes which were very elegant uh-huh. and very. Uh, they were very tight fitting. In fact, some people had their feet ruined by the shoes that, <laughs> that he made. When he because I, I like yeah, the second he, skin kind of shoes, right? Yeah, yeah, and he made. So when he measured my feet, I put right. woolen socks on so <laughs> make them, <laughs> make them a bit bigger. Anyway. The last, you know, they make la- a la- what's called a last, which is a wooden impression sure. of your, f- so that then they you can, can break ma- the repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to come well, in for went to this, uh, what is now the, the shop, mm-hmm. it's called Cleverly in, in the arcade. And um, uh, the person, uh, not quite sure, he was, was a man called Carnera, okay. who, who was the... He was a nephew of Primo Carnera, who was heavyweight boxer in the in the okay. world champion at one right. at time. Uh, anyway, and they sort of so I go, I still I still go there. In fact, I've just had a a pair of shoes made. They're very sort of slim, uh-huh. and he very he had, Italian he had, one could say. Yeah, well, yes, but I I don't know now the shoes that the, a lot of the shoes that are made now I don't like. They're all sort of funny shapes and so I don't right. like that. Um, and so there's a very sort of um, slim, uh-huh. give you a slim with a point with a pointed uh, slightly pointed top, yeah. yes, uh-huh. uh, and beautifully and beautifully finished mm-hmm. and um, so and then I have my shirts made in Italy in Rome. Okay. There's a uh, but it's not a it's not a shop. It's a, okay. a woman who makes. Shirts. Okay, the secret. They still do, and they still do. <laughs> still do. Does the buttons, oh, buttonholes so by hand? So, yeah, right. Uh, Which makes them longer lasting. Yeah, and also then, then it makes them nice. right. And it's sort of half the price of the shirts that you go to some of the big shirt, shirt makers, makers, and, yeah. and they okay. they're twice as nice, twice as good, and half the price. <laughs> which so is good. Almost a bargain. Yeah. yeah. So. Just, um, mm-hmm. Uh, God, I, try, I can't remember the name of um, the tailor now. I knew. I'd, have to, I'd have to ask my secretary. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, um, we can fill that in later. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no problem. I could. No problem. Will you? Uh, yeah. Will you? Yeah. 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 No problem. Just two more Something questions. Yeah. Um, it was it was briefly mentioned that that you're you're a fan of movies. You're a movie goer. Is that is that true or? I, yeah, I'm not sort of I'm not sort of ardent movie girl. No. I go to movies a bit, but not a lot these days. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. I'm sort of 
but what genre are you are you into? I mean, what what uh, what sort of films appeal to you? You like what are the uh, topics that interest you? Well, I used to sort of love westerns. And they're sort of, you know, they're sort of, um, they're, you know, some westerns I've seen, you know, a lot of the cla all the classic westerns right. I've seen, sort of from Shane, Stagecoach, sort of One Eyed Jacks, the, the, um, um, Magnificent Seven, the Clint Eastwood uh -huh. western, sure. uh, and so and so on. One Eyed Jacks is one, sort of, which is a Marlon Brando uh -huh. western. Which okay. he, he made two westerns. He made One Eyed Jacks and Southwest of Sonora. Mm -hmm. uh, and One Eyed Jacks was sort of real classic, great, you know, Carl Malden, the sort of bad sheriff, mm -hmm. and, and the sort of and uh, sort of a love interest and the whole thing. It was brilliant. Very mm -hmm. you know, sort of sense of humor to it as well as. As sort of pure. Uh, mm -hmm. So you watch these at home then? Hmm? You, so you watch these at home then on on, on a DVD or where uh, is, there, is there a movie no, theater I, that that um, uh, well, still have, runs yeah, them? Yeah, my or? wife's sort of a great cinema fanatic, so she's always collecting okay. films. Um, but I, you know, when I was at university, I saw all the classic, you know, the Bergmans and, uh, and right. uh, sort of even the sort of early cinema. Um, um, Renoir and mm -hmm. sort of a regle du jeu, things like uh, movies like that. Um, nowadays, I don't, I hate, I don't like, I don't like the, you know, some of the movies these days. I can't, I can't stand. I don't mm -hmm. understand them. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I mean, there's something, something like uh, uh, No Country for Old Men, mm -hmm. which was sort of people raved about. I thought it was an awful movie I've ever seen in my, my life. Complete, complete and utter rubbish. <laughs> Sort of con, conning the audience almost. Um, the I don't think the, the maker of the movie knew what he was quite what he was intending. And it's really brutal. I mean, that, some things were that, almost unwatchable. Uh, uh, right. With that. Um, um, what else? I mean, I'm trying to think of other movies I've seen recently. Well, that's quite a lot already. Yeah, something. Wait. I mean, the movie I really liked was. Uh, was um, um, uh, Life is Beautiful, La Vita Bella, Benini, mm -hmm. which won an Oscar, mm -hmm. which was, which, because, because um, I think the great, the great thing about that movie was that, that it was dealing with a sort of brutal subject, and exactly. there was no brutality mm -hmm. shown in the film, it just came through. Today, there's so much violence mm -hmm. and And uh, and uh, you know almost gratuitous violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just for its uh, own sake. But then safe, some yeah. you know some movies are sort of uh, you know in a way a joke. The all the Guy Ritchie movies mm -hmm. uh, fun you know mm -hmm. because they're, they're a genre and they're sort of and there's a lot of violence in those. Mm -hmm. But I mean it's almost sort of you know, Comical. realize it's yeah. not real you know, right. Right. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I just saw. Uh, DVD. I just saw. Uh, what's it called? Rockefeller. The last one he did. Uh -huh. Rockef uh, Rockefellers. Okay, I haven't yeah. seen it. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, you're in, you're of course into into bikes. Yes. I, I figured because because in in Vadura uh, there will be bikes for for guests to yes. go around the property. Not sort of bikes I ride. Though. No, of course not. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have a, a special a special dealer or, or you, you go to or um, do you keep of course? All the bikes you had before, or would you like? I've got quite a few of them. I guess you're a collector uh, in a way. Hmm? Would you say you're a collector of bikes? No, I'm not a collector to that to that not, extent. Not historically. But I suppose I've got how many bikes have I got? I've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six bikes. Mm -hmm. And, and one is fixed on a on a um, static machine, right. so so uh, which I use. And I, there's a there's a bike which I use for racing, which mm -hmm. is a light speed bike, a blade, mm -hmm. uh, which is now a bit out of date. It's quite. I've, I bought it when I first started doing crafts ten okay. years ago. So, so you might have to replace it. I think I should probably replace it. Mm -hmm. and, but and it's fine. But, oh, but you know, you, you you're, it's it's a blade bike, so it's, the wind resistance on the actual frame is right. is low. 
but also it's set up so you're in a very aerodynamic position. Mm -hmm. and it's about two miles an hour faster mm -hmm. over at 40 k than, uh, wow. than than my normal bike. And then I, I have a Sorota, which is an American bike, mm -hmm. which is handmade bike, um, which I use as my normal training, and that's set up so I'm very comfortable on it. I'm mm -hmm. not sort of too bent yeah, over. Bent down, yeah. uh, and I do a lot of mileage on, on, that, on, on that. that one. Mm -hmm. Um, you have a special dealer you trust? No, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, 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 the one in London is called, um, where I got the Sorota, he, he mm -hmm. specializes in Sorotas and Colnagos now, uh, called, um, it's called Cycle Fit, I think it's called Bike Fit now, again, okay. you better, you better check, check that, that. And they make. And then I have, there's a shop in, where I go, I go in the summer to Tuscany. My in-laws have a, it's an old castle there, and I spend, usually spend 10 days there in the summer. It's a great cycling country, mm -hmm. and a lot of the top teams go and train there in the oh, spring, okay. and there's a lot of hills. And, um, and, and there's a, a village called Donoratico, mm -hmm. and there's a bike shop uh, there. Uh, which is better than any bike shop in London. It's a little, <laughs> little, little, little village, and the sort of, um, and they have very good sort of uh, kit to wear. Right. Uh, and and they specialise in uh, Colnagos and Scott mm -hmm. bikes. So my Colnag, I've got a couple of Colnagos I bought there. Mm -hmm. uh, they now okay. have Scots. I've never ridden a Scott, but they're great bikes actually. And are these uh, mostly mi mountain bikes? No, the they have. They no? make okay. both mountain oh, they, and they make both. Okay. road okay. racing bikes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's it. Thanks very much. There you go. Thank you for listening to our show. Please remember to rate this podcast on iTunes and spread the word. Oh, and we're on Facebook too. Drop us a line. We'll be back next week. <laughs>